you can see that all the attempts to pin the criminality going on in the southeast had failed. They could not pin anything. There's nothing they could prove against Namde Kano. And those that orchestrated the kidnap, look at them very carefully. Look at them. Look at the Fulani now. The Fulani has become an endangered species. There's a curse hanging on the Fulani in Nigeria. Nobody wants to stay with the Fulani. Despite their years of planning to exterminate, exterminate, take over, carry Islamic Jihad into the southeast and destroy the quest for Biafra, combining with Britain and other world powers to make sure that Biafra does not come to light. At the end of the day, a curse is hanging on the Fulani Caliphate. They are forever in chains. They are the most backward region, let's say the north. The backward region in everything, in education, in economy, in infrastructure, everything you can tell about. Because you cannot kill three million Biafrans. And you go free. These people are the children of God. I'm talking about what I know. I don't, I'm not trying to poke my nose in any other, any other agitation. Because some people are saying that, uh, uh, is it only the Southeast? No, I'm talking about what I understand from the Biafran agitation. If there are people, if there are people that have this divine connection, these are Biafrans. These are people that God has chosen to liberate Africa. These are the people that these scavengers from the Sahel took coordinated attacks against. The Buhari government killed so many Southeasterners. The Buhari government carried an onslaught on Southeasterners. This revelation by Sahara reporters that Asari Dokubo was contracted by Buhari to kill Southeasterners, to kill Biafrans. The Fulani have been on the edge of exterminating Biafrans, supported by other tribes. But look at them now. Look at the northern region, even in Benue. They were part of those that killed Biafrans. Look at how that region is in this area. The Boko Haram, Ansar Udin, Fulani Hetzmen, uh, Iswap, they have taken over that region. There's no peace for the wicked. So far, you are holding on to Namde Kanu. So far, the federal government is holding on to this young man. There will be no peace. It's a natural thing. You can't, you can't, what, somebody God has blessed, somebody that belongs to God, somebody God has ordained, you cannot hold that person and you live in peace. Since the Biafran Nigerian Civil War, how do you see Nigeria as a country? It has never been well with Nigeria. We have had leaders, capable leaders, but at the end of the day, they have nothing to show for it. The Fulani, they are seen as bad belle, bad luck. Any Fulani that comes into a community, people are not comfortable with these Fulani guys. Anyone that has raised his hand against Mazin the Kanu, there's a cause hanging on that person. So that's why it is, we are advising the federal government, leave this guy. Because as you hold on to this guy, there will be no progress. Buhari holding on to this guy, arresting this guy, he became one of the worst presidents in history of Nigeria. Still, Tunubu government has not done the right thing or what is expected of him and look at what is happening to his government. You might think this is ordinary. No, it's not ordinary. There are, there are some battles you don't fight ordinary, like with Boko Haram. It's an ideology. You think by killing all these guys who stop that Boko Haram, their onslaught, whatever they are trying to do, killing and establishing an Islamic caliphate in the north, conquering other tribes and taking over, do you think that by just killing them will work? It is an ideology. So is Biafra. Biafra is a spirit that cannot be quenched nor conquered. They thought that when they seize Namdi Kanu, they will be expecting aggression, physical aggression, riots in the southeast, for instance, planning to come and yes, uh, make him escape, breaking into the GSS facility, opera in the southeast. But we, are, we were wise enough not to say anything at that point. We are wise enough to use diplomatic means to move for the release of this guy. 
We went through the court processes. They tried all the code. Started with 11 count chart. Reduced it to three, four. Trying to pin. And our pickup said, this guy, there's nothing you can hold on him. There's nothing you can pin on him. But st it still held on to him. As you keep on holding Namdi Kanu, the country will not get better. You might have the best technocrats. You might have the best people in place of power. You'll be surprised that the powers, the powers that are holding Nigeria down, these are the people Namdi Kanu was fighting against. Like Pharaoh was told, let my people go. That's what Moses told Pharaoh. So Nigeria, let Namdi Kanu and let Biafrans go. Hence, you don't want them to be part of Nigeria by your actions. You don't want them to be part of the national cake. You want them to be slaves. You don't want them to be part of the national discourse. You don't want them to be part of national building. You don't want them to be part of the national conversation. You gang up, because especially the Southwest, you gang up with other tribes to pin down the Igbo man. This their guy, their top guy, is in GSS custody, not in Kirikiri, which is an anomaly. You use injustice and shrewd yourself. You, you surround yourself with injustice and you expect the country called Nigeria to move forward. You cannot establish a country on wickedness and expect it to blossom. You cannot. You cannot prosper with wickedness. Holding on to Namdi Kanu, you know quite well that it is going to cost, cost opera in the, south, in the Southeast. There's going to be agitation in security in the Southeast, and politicians took advantage of that, especially politicians in the Southeast. Ever since Hopu Zodima came into power, we have had series of series of attacks and destruction. Politicians, they started fighting each other and they, they started playing politics and games with the lives of their own people. Their own people. They started orchestrating so many attacks on their opponents, making that place unbearable. In conjunction with the federal government, they decided to use Gestapo style on the Southeasterners. You cannot kill a spirit. A spirit is a spirit. You cannot kill a spirit. Even if you kill Namdekanu today, Biafra is going to come out worse, much more worse than it is today. We are surprised that a deputy senate president is speaking about Biafra. A deputy senate president is holding the, pushing the agitation. A deputy senate president. It is no more only Namdekano and IPOB as a group or organization. Lawmakers are speaking. Everybody is speaking. Forums are coming up. People are springing up to speak. Not the talk of when you now say you want to eliminate the young guy. If you eliminate the young guy, ordinarily, by flesh, normal premonition, we might not do anything, but there's a spirit that will speak. And when that spirit speaks, people unknowingly will go and start moving into the streets and start holding, making sure they bring beer for a faster that it can never happen. Some people believe in their minds that these people are playing. If you want to, Tunubu is not going to release Naz, Naz Namdi Kanu. It is going to be a miraculous thing. We'll be surprised at what is going to happen. People are afraid that Nigeria will divide. And if it divides, it's not going to be their benefit. They know that they are gaining from the structure of criminality in Nigeria. Whether they be Igbo, whether they be Yoruba, whether they be outside, they know they are gaining from the structure of criminality in Nigeria. But they don't want Nigeria to divide. While Nigeria is not progressing, it is going down the drain. Every government that comes, our debt increases. While we have mineral resources, bountiful mineral resources, bountiful surplus, excess mineral resources, this money is being stolen. A government will come and explain to you start telling you that snakes swallow money, baboos swallow money, a government, and we use our eyes and look at them as human beings, and we just fold our hands and, okay, oh, till Lord, it has gone. Somebody, a human being, somebody that has thinking faculty, someone that is 
you, you see as normal tells you that a snake came and swallowed millions of naira in a ministry we have efcc investigations were not made forensic whatever was not made nothing everybody just felt and as a country you are putting your hope in and these are leaders leaders that have captured the state that are at the helm of uh, things these are the leaders you are putting your trust in to give you good governance a peter b i knew was not going to be what was not going to be president why because the establishment was an establishment of corruption they will never allow someone that come and spoil or put sansa in their garage they will never allow peter b they will gang up in whatever way and manner because they know that this guy is coming to do what is expected of a sane country. They will never want to allow him. They will gang up. Look at what is happening in Kenya. There's a, a report, uh, a test message we saw. Politicians were telling influencers to work on the minds of the people to stop protesting for their own good. They didn't protest, they were just on their own. You tax them to destroy them. They arise and protest. You are telling them to stop protesting so that you can tax them the more. They should stop protesting, fight for their rights so that they will not be killed by you. They should stop defending themselves from being killed by you for their own good. Okay, their own good is to get killed. Get killed, impoverished, is for their, is 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 something that is better for them. So they paid influencers not to talk what they can do to Peter B. Make sure he doesn't. They planted some people in the Labour Party. They planted them here, not there. They made sure that they don't allow these guys smell that place because that structure is a strong structure. These guys, they don't have conscience. These guys, they don't consider you as anything. They consider their interests. Yeah, cabal. That's why you go hungry t from now to tomorrow. They will spend it 21 billion naira on a residence. Where was? Where was Osima just staying before? Where was Atiku staying before? Where was Jonathan when he was vice president? Where was he staying before? Where was um, uh, Sambo? Where was he staying before? That you needed to. So yeah, it was so urgent for you to, to, to renovate a building. A building, a luxurious building, why people are dead with hunger. So, like I said, they don't rate you. So if you are, you are, you are saying, ah, one Nigeria, this, that, this, that, my brother, sit down and think. Count, count your, sit down and, and reason, look at it very well, constructively. In every local government, there is structure of criminality. In every commission in the state, there is structure of criminality. Like there are people that are, they sit on that structure. They loot and bezel, they know themselves, they cooperate. If you come to change things, they will fight you. They can kill you. This is the Niger what is what Nigeria is made up of. This is what Niger when you go to local government, local government chairman will have some area boys as his backup. So anybody that wants to do anything, like if you want to do community journalism and you start doing reports on the bad roads, blah, 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 and everything, and they know that you're in that community, they have the people that, area boys, that they can use against you. They can even eliminate your life, threaten you and whatsoever. That's why during the elections, they were, they, the APC successfully threatened voters. The APC successfully, they have that structure. Of criminality when they say p2b does not have structure it means the structure of criminality p2b cannot destroy that structure if he gets into that plate it is by god's grace but one thing about namdi Kanu is that the structure holding biafra will be destroyed from within will be destroyed like kenyans Igbos are fearless people they are strong-headed, they are stubborn people, you know. I know the weakness of the Igbo man, I know. Every tribe has their weaknesses. They are resolute, they are defiant. They, they, don't, take, they don't take 
nonsense. That's the Igbo man. So three years, Namikano is in custody. But you know one thing, one news, good news I have for you, that on the third day, there was a resurrection. This is the third year. And the handwriting is on the wall. If Nigeria continues to hold Namikano, it will implode from within. That is a fact. It will implode. You can see the crisis. You can see the economic downturns. You can see the problem Nigeria is increasing day by day. The secret is because they are holding Namdekanu. Please, for the good of those of life, because first, we are first human beings before you are a Yoruba or Igbo or Hausa. We are first human beings because of humanity. You need to consider that releasing Namdekanu hmm, will bring a change in the South East. The biggest mistake made by the federal government of Nigeria was to arrest Namdekanu. They thought that by arresting Namdekanu, the Biafran agitation would die a natural death. They thought that by holding the head of the IPOB, that is Mazen Namdekanu, everybody would stop the agitation. But little did they know that that singular act of the federal government, kidnapping Namdekanu, or let's use the word, yes, kidnapping, would fuel the agitations. The day Malami announced that the federal government was having Namdekanu in their custody, it went as a shock to all Igbos, all Southeasterners, all Biafrans. Where I was, I was shocked when I heard the report that Namdekanu was arrested. I never believed that he was arrested. So many stories behind his arrest, but that day was one of the days that there was this kind of sadness that came over the Southeast because Somebody they held and they hold in high esteem was in the hands of the federal government. Though there are reports that he was kidnapped, he was beaten, he was battered. Other report was that he was arrested. But that is not the point. Today marks three years that Namdekan was arrested by the federal government. Or let me use the word kidnap. Three years he has been in custody. And we are not taking this lightly because despite the fact that through the courts, 11 count charge reduced to other count charges. They could not pin anything against Mazinam de Kanu. He still won them in the court, the court of law. They were orchestrated attacks in the Southeast so as to pin these attacks on the IPOB leader Mazi Namde Kanu. Killings of policemen, killings of soldiers, killings of civilians, killings of Biafrans, destruction of lives and properties going around the Southeast was carried out by people we call unknown gunmen to pin that criminality on Namdi Kanu. At the end of the day, according to him, he said, I'm going to win them in their court. It was a very, very tough time for Biafrans when they heard that Namdi Kanu was arrested. People around me were shocked. Christian, do you tell me, are you telling me that you feel bad that this man, this in quote criminal has been arrested? I just looked at them and I shook my head. Now the world is talking about Namdekanu. Now the United States is talking about Namdekanu. Now people that are not Igbos or Biafrans, they are talking about Namdekanu that he must be free. Today marks the third anniversary of Namdekanu arrested, kidnapped, rendition from Kenya. The Fulani Caliphate that is instrumental in the kidnap of Mazdam the Kanun, the Ohaneze and the Igbo politicians that know about what is happening, what happened that day, how he was taken, was seized. There's a report that said he was seized from Nairobi into Nigeria. There was no evidence of rendition, extraordinary rendition. There was no evidence at all. He was seized. These people that had a hand in his seizure from Kenya to Nigeria, there's something they call karma. They are in disarray. The Fulani has become an endangered species. Nobody wants to identify with the Fulani. Nobody. When you see a Fulani in your environment, it seems that an aggressor is there, whether the person is good or bad. The Fulani has been seen, they are being seen as the problem we have in Nigeria. That's why nobody wants to associate with them. They have carried on calculated killings in farmlands, in churches, in mosques, wherever you find them, whether in Boko Haram, 
whether you find them in Iswap, whether you find them in As Ansaruddin or Al Qaeda. The Fulani that has conspired against Mazen Amdekanu, they are in disarray at this point in time. 